Welcome back to Backwoods, boys. Now, this episode is a little bit different in that it follows myself, Dale, and a couple of my biology friends way up north on an excursion to investigate the dens of some black bears that we'd collared with GPS trackers the spring before. We headed up in early March with the intent to locate these dens and investigate the sorts of dens that are used, the type of tree cover preferred by the bears, and a bunch of other factors. And although, trust me, it really was a serious science excursion, it was also the outing of a lifetime. We were up north of Wollaston Lake in northern Saskatchewan. Now, there's not much up here besides forests, bogs, lakes, and some uranium mines, but the landscape has its own fierce beauty that never grows old. Jack Pine Ridge blends into Jack Pine Ridge and eventually gives way to black spruce bogs and open taiga, and although it seems like a barren area, it's actually teeming with animal life. From the snow-white ptarmigan to snowshoe hares, lynx, wolves, marten, wolverine, moose, caribou, and of course black bears, there's no shortage of fascinating species in this area. The team was led by Brandon, who had spent the winter combing the autumn data to pinpoint the den locations that could be accessed from the only road that crosses northern Saskatchewan. With us was Patricia, the master's student who was in charge of the overall black bear study, and was kind enough to let Brandon and I take part in it for our own projects. And of course, I'm here too, but behind the camera the entire time. Hey, so this is just the first den we're going to go to. We've got a little over a kilometer hike, and we'll hopefully flag it off and get some good pictures and find out what's going on here. No, <laughs> you never know. I don't know. My coat's open. <laughs> Each GPS caller is also equipped with a VHF transmitter that sends a signal on a unique frequency, allowing us to pinpoint the location a little more closely. Unfortunately, it turns out that the bear in the first den must have denned right beneath a stony ridge because our VHF receiver was unable to pick up any signal. As frustrating as it was to have hiked three hours into the location, only to find ourselves unable to locate the den, we had to call it quits. We struggled back the way we'd come, and moved on to the next den. Yeah, I think we're still heading in the right direction. The big tree. Sure. We have a few little tricks up our sleeves for finding out exactly where these bear dens are. The coolest tool in our arsenal is this little scope. Looking through the viewfinder shows heat signatures of the surrounding objects. Trees that have been heated by the sun shine up as orange, but the snow is generally uncolored. The hope is that the scope will reveal a hot spot beneath the snow, indicating the presence of a warm, and hopefully deeply sleeping, bear.
Between malfunctioning collars and deep snow, we were unable to find any other dens. But just hearing those cubs makes this all worth it. This wasn't even the end of our trip though. Our bear den team was only a small part of the larger team that had come up to do the annual Woodland Caribou Aerial Survey, and we were lucky enough to get to join them in the helicopter for a day. The Woodland Caribou team was headed by Clara, who's in the front of the helicopter. We're in the air with a similar telemetry antenna attached to the ski of the helicopter, searching for caribou groups. A few years ago, our lab collared a number of caribou with GPS collars just like these black bears, and each year these animals are tracked down by helicopters so that a count of the declining local population can be made. The tricky part of this process is locating the caribou. Just like with the antenna that we used for the bears, the telemetry system works by pinging louder when it's facing the transmitter located in the collar on the animal. Both Clara and the pilot can hear the pinging in their headphones and the pilot has to carefully pivot the helicopter back and forth to pick up on the strongest signal. Now that we know we're close to the collared individual, we need to try and spot them in the trees down below. Again, this requires careful and skillful navigation on the pilot's part as he circles around patches of trees trying to move the caribou group into the open so that we can count them. Finally, one group of four caribou with a single collared cow breaks from the cover and we get our first caribou sighting of the day. Having located the day's caribou, we headed back to base camp to call it a night. All in all, this expedition was the experience of a lifetime. We searched out some bear dens, got screamed at by bear cubs, and flew around finding woodland caribou from a helicopter. It's not a bad weekend's work if I do say so myself. 
Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed tuning in to our little adventure. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content because God willing, there's going to be a ton of similar videos in the near future. I've got a whole master's degree collaring and tracking down moose ahead of me. So make sure to comment, subscribe, and follow close to see more of this sort of thing. We'll see you next time.